Lee Sequin behind me. Anyways, hi, my name is Valerie Carter and welcome to my YouTube channel. I wanted to do a really quick clip of why I'm here. Later on, I'll do another video of why I'm here and my full story. Um, but I wanted to start off with, with a little bit of my story. So in 2019, um, it was actually Christmas day of 2019. I was, I found a lump in my breast and two days later, um, it was confirmed. <laughs> it was confirmed that I had cancer. And so, um, our family had already been going through some stuff with, with a sick, um, sick family members, a family member had died and here I have cancer. So we come home, my husband and I, we tell our children, they're absolutely devastated. And 24 hours later, literally 24 hours later, my father-in-law dies. And that is how we brought in the year 2020. Um, and I realized that 2020 was the worst year ever for most people, but we literally had the worst things um, start our 2020 off on. And I had two choices. I had a choice that um, I could just be like, why God, why? Or I could praise him in the midst of this storm. And believe me, we were going through a storm. It felt like a hurricane and a tornado all at once. It just, it was just devastating for us. And so I chose the latter. I chose to, to praise the Lord in my storm. And little did I know what God was going to propel me into. So when I determined that I was going to praise him in the storm, he began to just really speak to me and speak to me. And, um, he's always kind of waking me up in the middle of the night, three thirty, four thirty, five thirty in the morning to pray. Um, but I never got out of bed. And so he started speaking to me and he said, get a double mastectomy, mastectomy. I've had it done and I still can't say it right. So the doctors kind of thought, well, that's really drastic. And we don't think that you need to do that. And I said, you know, my husband and I have discussed it and we are pretty certain this is the, the route that we need to go. And so we, um, so I did, I got a double mastectomy and a week or two later, um, I had multiple surgeries. So I can't remember when, um, the doctor says it was a really good, um, choice that you made to get a double. And I, we were like, why? And she says, had you gotten a lumpectomy, you would have been dealing with cancer a year from now. And, um, of course a year from now <laughs> would have been, uh, still in the midst of COVID and when nobody was getting treated. And the reason why they said I would be dealing with cancer a year from now is because they actually found more cancer growing. And so I'm going to go through that story another day, but really quick, um, the Lord had shared with me in the midst of all of this, that I had gotten cancer from my own sin, my own transgressions, um, my own rebellion, um, through unforgiveness. And so he kind of dealt with me on that and he brought healing, he brought restoration, and then he brought transformation and he began to speak to me and speak to me and speak to me. And he would wake me up at three 30 in the morning. And what I would do is I would pray until I fell back asleep. And finally, I just kind of complained to a friend and I said, gosh, you know, he's always waking me up and I just want to sleep. And she says, oh my God, Valerie get out of bed and find out what God is trying to tell you. Get out of bed. So at that moment, I decided, fine, I'll get out of bed. But I was like, dude, <laughs> let's make a deal. I'll get out of bed at 530 in the morning if you just let me sleep until 530. And then I'll get up and I'll pray. And in fact, I'll give it to you all. You can have as much time as you want. And so, um, 5.30 led to 6.30, to 7.30, to 8.30, to 9.30, to 10.30. The longer I sat in his presence, the, the more he began to download. And he's given me word after word after word, word to help people heal, word to, to, um, about this nation, words about the ecclesia, things that are coming down the, the pipe, you know? And so... Um, God used cancer and that storm to shake me and wake me. And I'm really happy he did. So as I began to get out of bed 
and I began to pray and I began to worship and I began to listen, the Lord began giving me word after word. So I began to write it down. And um, a little side note is the Lord told me, I want you to stop watching TV. I don't want you listening to secular music. I just want you spending time with me. So I said, okay, because I had made that deal of I'll get out of bed if you just let me sleep until 530. And so when I gave him my all and said, okay, I'm going to take everything that is worldly and things of this world and just push it aside and spend it with you. That's when he began to really wreck me. And so I'd write these words down and every once in a while I would turn on YouTube and listen to a sermon or, you know, um, I'm not a big one on listening to prophets, um, not because I don't value what they say, but because I'm going, God, if you have something to say, say it to me, please, please come. I, you know, I want to be like Moses to where you come and you speak to me face to face. So he began to do that. And so I would go and I'd listen to someone like Dutch Sheets or Tim or Amanda Grace or um, there's Lance Walnut. There's, there's so many different people that they would give words of the Lord. And I would go, what? Oh my gosh, my mind would be blown because I'm going, you know, I'd watch them maybe a month later, a couple weeks later, and I'd write it down in my book. And I'm going, oh my God, the Lord told me that a month before they even put that word out. And here I'm going, I'm mind blown. I'm mind blown. So um, here the Lord is giving me words and I have no venue, no platform. I'm just an everyday person. Actually, I'm a stay at home mom who homeschools her kid. My la- I have one last one to homeschool and that's my day. And God is choosing to speak to me. So I'm sitting here telling my friend, I said, look, I watched this video of someone saying that if the Lord is giving you a word, you need to actually speak it out loud and then it, he can make it come to pass. So not just write it down, but speak it out loud. So I, t- I called her on Saturday morning and I said, look, the Lord has a word. I just want to share it with you and speak it out loud because that's what it said. And then I'll let it go. And so as I'm telling her the word, she goes, oh my God, you need to speak this word to the public. And I'm going, I don't have a venue. And she goes, Valerie, oh my gosh, you have YouTube, start a YouTube channel. So here I am. (laughs) Here I am. I'm starting a YouTube channel. Um, I have lots of great stories and encounters that I'm going to talk about in this YouTube channel, the time I went to heaven, the time that when I went to heaven, the Lord showed me hell, the time where God used an angel to save my life, where I physically felt the angel, Um, a time where I had an encounter with Jesus, where he actually hugged me, Um, a time where I even woke up to visually seeing it. I was awake and I'm seeing that a demon try to kill me. And because heaven and hell are real, I can no longer be silent about the fact that Jesus is love. He loves you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to call you and into his arms and hold you and minister to you. So this word that I have, I believe it's a, a, it's a corporate word for both the church, the ecclesia and the government. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm really new to this. I'm new to sharing my words corporately. I've shared my words one-on-one with people or in a Bible study that um, I might be in or be teaching or whatever. And um, so I've done that, but I've never done it corporately. So it takes a lot of courage to be in front of this camera because believe me, I'm one of those people. I would rather be behind the camera than in front of the camera. <laughs> Just, I would rather be in behind the camera. I, there's not a lot of pictures of this mama because mama's always taking pictures. So I ask for a little bit of grace and mercy. And um, I don't know if anyone has spoken these words because I haven't really been listening to them. And there's a lot of things in this word. I don't know if it's figurative or literal. And I don't even understand some of the things that are being said because I don't watch news. I don't watch TV. I don't even listen to music really unless it's worshiping the Lord. So I wanted to share with you the way the Lord speaks to me. And every day is different. He doesn't always 
share with me or speak to me the same. Sometimes he, he gives me dreams, lots and lots of dreams, and I'll have multiple dreams in a night. Or he'll even give my husband dreams and he'll, my husband will tell me the dreams. And I'm like, whoa, that's God speaking to both of us or that's God speaking to you. Or he will give me pictures like a collage in my head or I'll see a vision or um, I'll open up his word and then he'll say, start to write down what I'm telling you. Um, and sometimes I, I, I will hear words in my spirit, but the most part it's through dreams and through his word. So the other night... I went to bed and I wear earbuds in my sleep. I listen to worship or the Bible app in my sleep all night long. Um, and I, in the middle of the night, I heard the Lord say, when you get up, I want you to read this. And I said, okay, Lord. And he gives me, um, he does that all the time. Read this chapter in the Bible. And I said, okay. So I start to read it and he goes, now I want you to go through and I want you to go where I tell you to go. And I want you to write down everything that I'm saying. So, um, Again, when the Lord speaks to me, he speaks to me in pictures. And these, these words he's been giving me over and over again, lots of pictures of the government and lots of pictures of the church. So he begins by showing me Washington, D.C. And then I see the word earthquake, a big one. And um, again, not the first time I've heard this. I've re it's been repeated over and over again. Then he shows me a pasture of shepherds, like an open meadow of shepherds. Um, they're kind of hanging out in this open field. And, and, and then it just says, the church is destruction. And then he showed me a picture of California. And I wasn't really sure if he was saying earthquake, so I kind of put a question mark in my journal. Of course, there's earthquakes in California all the time. The city that I live in, there's an earthquake just about every day. So that one, I was like, okay, Lord, earthquakes. <laughs> um, and then he says, my patience has been exhausted. They don't remember my commands. And he's talking about both the church and the government. And then he shows me cities on fire. And um, just about a week ago, he showed me the same scene, cities on fire. He kind of named some cities. I wrote them down. I was like, eek, oh my gosh. Again, don't know um, if it's literal or figurative, but he just shows me a picture of cities on fire. And he says, there is no safety in the city. There will be many deaths. And he says, because of these four transgressions and the four transgressions that he named is um, human sacrifice, like the actual human sacrifice. He shows me pictures of people being humanly sacrificed and then abortion. Um, number two is human sex slavery um, and the torture of human beings. Um, number three is wolves. He showed me wolves in sheep's clothing, um, as in pastors, prophets. And people that use the name of the Lord for their own gain. And then fourth, he showed me the false lying government. And, um, and these were pretty much all pictures. And then he, then he starts off the word by just saying, The one who holds the scepter shall be cut off. The chief of the nation. A remnant of evil governing powers are now going to per perish. And he's talking about the capital. And he says, I have no plans of, re re excuse me, I have no plans of retracting the punishment. He says, um, the brotherhood, there's fire and destruction that's going to come. The brotherhood, I don't know if that's America, if that's outside of America, or if that's in the church, but brotherhood. And he shows me a picture of fire and destruction. Um, and he repeats fire, fire, like fire from heaven. Um, over and over again. And he, he's saying that this fire is actually representing punishment because of abortion and human trafficking. He says, I will kindle a wall of fire around the capital. Burn to the bone. Burn to the bone. I will cut off the judge and slay the princes with him. They have not kept my commandments. My fire is to be sent forth. It will devour the, cap the capital. And then he showed me um, August and November. Um, he said that, that there would be blackness in the sky and they would be very dark days. Then he starts to talk about corrupt 
pastors and he uses the term pastors and their sons or pastors and the people that they mentor. They lie with the same girl. They defile the they defile God's holy name. They use my altar for their own gain, power and money in the house of the God. I will destroy both above and below. And then he he brought me to a scripture that he had me study in Exodus chapter 6. And God says he doesn't say in his word I can. He says I will. So in Exodus chapter 6, Moses has now, he's thrown down his staff in front of Pharaoh and then the magicians have thrown down their staff and now they have two snakes and Moses' snake is, you know, hanging out and Moses' snake swallows the magician's snakes and then all of a sudden Pharaoh's heart is hardened and what he does is he increases the workload of the Egyptian people and God's going, God, what... I'm sorry, excuse me. Moses goes, God, what are you doing? Right? Because now the, they're, they're being even worked harder and he doesn't understand because God told him to go and bring his people out of Egypt. And God says in his word in Exodus chapter 6, he goes, now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. And he uses the word I will a lot. I am the Lord. I have established my covenant. He is the promise keeper. I have heard the cry and the groans of my people. I am the Lord. I will bring you out under the burden of the Egyptians. I will be your God. I will take you as my people. I am the Lord. I will bring you into the land which I have sworn to you. I will give you the heritage. And see, when God says, I will. It means that he will, he will do it because the Bible in his word, he never says I can. Well, we know that you can Lord, but he says, I will, meaning it's, it's established. It's going to be done. And in this word, he's saying it is established. I will destroy both above and below. You have not spoken my truth. We're still talking to the church and have kept my people from hearing the truth, leading them astray. They will not escape. My swift justice and my wrath will come upon them. I will expose their evilness. I will punish your iniquities, your gross and perverse wicked acts. Acts. And then he talks about, again, he brings me back to the picture of the city, calamity in the city. It's the city. He says, I have already revealed my plans. You cannot say you did not know. I have spoken. I have. He says, there is an enemy in your land. He's, he's, he's warned us about it before. There's an enemy in your land and he will ponder it. Um, then he goes back to the shepherds. And I am visiting them for their transgressions, for their sins upon my altar. They shall be cut off. They shall fall to the ground. The, um, and I want to just go back. Transgressions is different than sin. There's sin, transgressions, and um, transgressions, sins, and iniquities. Transgressions is when you've crossed the line. You've trespassed. Sin is when you're ignorant to right and wrong trespass or transgressions is when you've crossed the line and God's going, they've crossed the line. These, these wicked people, both in the government and in the church have crossed the line. He says, now the ivory house will be destroyed. Look to the months of September, August, September, and November. The ivory house is the white house and the, um, winter house, which he's speaking of the capital or the, a house with many members. He says, Thou the teeth, of the, the teeth of the enemy will be crushed. The great house shall have an end, the capital and the white. There is a thoroughness and a purpose for my destruction. I do not tarry. I do not tarry any longer. Before he was saying, I tarry for a reason. I'm giving them a chance to repent. But now he's going, I'm done. My patience has been exhausted. You shepherds and you lawmakers have ignored my desires. You have not returned to me. I have given you plenty of chances. You have not returned to me. You have not returned to me. I even allowed a plague to be sent to you. Yet you haven't returned to me. Now he says, prepare to meet your God. 
You cities will be destroyed and only a remnant will be left. I say, seek me, but you refuse. So sorrow and bitterness shall be in your mouths. Waters of the sea shall be upon the earth. They shall, there shall be mourning in the streets. And woe to you, for the day of the Lord is here. Darkness on the earth, and I will no longer hear you. Justice will now rain upon you. The waters will overtake you. The Lord has sworn by himself, I will. And even the men that remain in the house shall die. I shall break the house, the great house into bits and the little house into pieces. You high places shall be laid to waste, left desolate, and a sword is rising against the house. The harlot shall die. A survey line has been set and the end has come. Many will be dead. They will be thrown out in silence. They will be swallowed up, those who swallow up the needy and make the poor to fail. Those who buy humans up, it is now time for their end. Look to August and November. Waters, rivers shall swell from sea to sea and there will be a great quake. I will. Then the word inflation just kind of passed through my head. Um, and then he says, um, Slay the last of them. They have the thoughts that they climb to the heavens, but have dug their way to hell. The serpent will bite them. They will turn on themselves and the sword will cut them off. I have set my eyes on them for harm and not for good because my patience has been exhausted. My eyes have seen the evil in their kingdom and I will destroy the house. Then I will rebuild my remnant, my word, behold, the days are coming. I will, I will bring my people back. I will but rebuild the cities, the houses, the lands. It will be my ways, my name, my covenants will prevail. And so this is the word of the Lord. I wish I 100% knew what everything meant, but I don't. <laughs> um, and I know that, um, there are lots of words because God, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he speaks to his people and his word is the same across the board. But here's the deal. And when I sat down with the Lord and I said, okay, Lord, um, speak to me. The reason why he spoke to me is because he wants to speak to me. He wants to speak to you. He doesn't want you going and looking for a word for somebody else. He doesn't want somebody else feeding you. He goes, I want to feed you. I want you to go and I want you to spend time in prayer. I want you to spend time in my word. I want you to spend time in worship and I will encounter you. This is a season of encounters. This is a season of suddenlies. God is wanting to blow people's mind. I had a word spoken over me not too long ago where um, um, my sweet friend and pastor, she says, God wants to blow your mind. And I said, bring it. And I believe that that is something not just for me because I'm just an everyday person. He is no respecter of person. So he wants to blow your mind. He wants to download and speak to you, whether it's through dreams, through his word, through your worship time, through a vision as you worship him. I'm going to put out some other videos on how to worship the Lord, on how to bring, go into the courts with thanksgiving. I'm sorry, enter the gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Um, I'm hoping to start a little blog where I'll just have documents that I um, that I create from writing out prayers. I write my prayers out and I use them as a template of where I want to pray for the day. Um, I, you know, or, um, sometimes I'll use those. Sometimes I'll just speak, I'll just pray in the spirit and allow God to lead and guide me what he wants to pray in that day. Um, but he is wanting to encounter you. He is wanting to wreck you. He is wanting to engage with you because he loves you. His thoughts for you are innumerable and he's so wonderful and his love is so consuming. That's all he wants to do. And on top of all that, he wants us to go and bring other people that he can love. He wants us to be hell snatchers. 
because hell is real and eternity. When we leave this world and our flesh, we leave our flesh behind, our spirit man does go to one of two places and there's only one way to heaven and that is through Jesus. And if and the last thing I want to tell you is if anyone is ever speaking a word and they said, the Lord says, your responsibility is to go out and seek it. So if a pastor shares a scripture and, you know, I really encourage, get a, get a real Bible, put the app down because the, the government is censoring all kind of things. Don't think that they won't censor the very word of God on the app. Don't think they've already changed some of the translations. I personally like the new King James version. It is the closest version to Latin that was um, translated from Greek and Hebrew. So I went Greek, Hebrew, Latin, King James Version, New King James Version. It just kind of gets rid of all those these and thous. Um, but God, but God wants to engage with you. But how do you do that? You have to begin to feed yourself. You have to begin to search the Lord out through reading His Word and praying. Because as much as it's great that there's YouTube channels where people are pouring into you, God is a God of relationship and he wants to pour himself into you. So I encourage you and I thank you for listening. I hope that this blesses you. It's, it's one word, but there are many to come along with just what he teaches me in his word. So I encourage you to like, subscribe, and share. You have a blessed day. Jesus loves you.